Hey, how you doing? Welcome to five uh, d, uh, d, uh, d, uh, no, um, d lifestyles. That's right, five D lifestyles. We are in my lab. It's awesome. I'm talking to you. No, I'm not, because I got this thing on my face, and so I'm gonna project it into your brain. No, I'm using a voiceover thing. It's this is years later. This is old footage. We're putting petries into grain blocks. We're going step by step. So first step, select some good petries. All right, make sure they're good, they're clean. You want clean mycelium, obviously. Ideally, you don't want them going all the way to the edge, then you know no little hidden contaminants are in there. Although I will say I have used them fully to the edge. I use alcohol a lot, there's a nice example. Um, spray those things, make sure they're good. You know, gang, you can use as many Petris as you want to transfer into grain. Obviously, the higher concentration you go, the faster it's gonna run, but you can go one Petri, uh, you can do different size grain blocks. You know, I'm stating the obvious here. So open this thing up. That's how I fold my bags to keep them good. And my pressure cooker, these have been pressure cooker, my large cooker. This is my sterilizer for my scalpel. Heat is the best way to clean. So now I'm just cooling down the end of that scalpel right in the middle of that agar. Cut nice, even strips, a nice grid pattern. I wanna use all that mycelium, obviously. Right, so definitely, once I've sterilized this scalpel, I can just keep using it, but do keep in mind, when you're working in front of this laminar flow hood, you always wanna keep things in the clean zone. So boom, I'm just dropping in there, drop it on in there, drop it on in there. I have used, you know, I like that flick technique, but I have scraped it off the inside of the bag before as well, and that works. So when I'm rolling through, you see I'm holding that scalpel up. I just keep that scalpel always in front of the laminar flow hood, and then as long as that doesn't shift, I can do all these Petris in one go. So here's a closer look. This one obviously has a massive margin. Obviously you don't need that much. We're just going for the mycelium. This is our last dish. Pop it on out of there and put it on in. So there we go. So we've done all of our mycelium. There's a bunch of chunks of agar in there with the mycelium, now we're gonna close the bag. So make sure you fill the bag with air. Obviously, you know, this is a laminar flow, that's clean air going into the bag, keeping it clean, but giving it some oxygen. And then closing these things is kind of the challenge. You see, I've got, I'm kind of stretching the plastic with both my fingers, get that first seal is the most crucial, crucial not to get any little folds in there. I like to do at least two or three seals on these bags. Um, this is just heat sealing the bags. So I like to do two or three just to make sure if it accidentally pops open that it's got a few security things. So there's my three. Now I'm gonna pop it up. So all that agar, yeah, make sure you got the plenum. Make sure you, there's no little random holes anywhere. And then we're just gonna mix it up. So these agar chunks, I'm trying to distribute evenly through. You can obviously do this like horizontally, vertically. Grain mixes up nice and easy. So that's it, folks. We are mixed up in there. Obviously, you want to label. This is Lentinula edotes. So you, I like to use the Latin. Most people use the Latin. This is old footage. So this is like March of a long time ago. And then I use the Stamets method. So that's grain spawn one. So it's the first generation from the Petri dish. Um, I usually would say maximum three generations. So this is after probably just a few days, really, depending on the mycelium. A little bit of growth there. <coughs> Excuse me. And with the grain spawn, what you can do, now, so now this is, again, a few days to a week later, and you see those little chunks that are falling down? That's chunks of mycelium. So I'm going to break those up by hand, right? Find every little chunk in there, break it all up, and then I'm going to mix it up and redistribute this. So this gets a nice, even redistribution. It's a great way to do it with grain. I rarely do it with sawdust spawn, although you can. It's a lot more challenging. But now I've just evenly distributed and spread it out. So boom, check it out. That's what a completed grain spawn looks like. Nice and white, colonized evenly. Look for any contaminants as you go. Don't use them if you got contamination. And there you go, you got your grain spawn. You can pass this on to more grain spawn, or you can pass it on to sawdust spawn or freeing blocks, depending on what you do. Thanks for checking and watching. We appreciate it. Keep on rocking the fun lifestyle. Ciao.